Welcome to Invited Back Podcast with Savage Kapahu. It is December 23rd, two days away from Christmas, and I am going to share today a few more reflections on this Advent season as I look into some favorite Christmas hymns and songs. These pieces were originally written for a Mama Love winter devotional. I'm going to start with Hark the Herald Angel Sing. This was one of my grandma's favorite songs. I always think of her when I sing hymns at Christmas time, and it's been so fun this year, especially to see my daughters enjoying singing <laughs> the Christmas songs. I'm laughing because, you know, the little voices that are just quote unquote singing at the top of their lungs. So hark the herald angels sing. There's a line that says, With angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. I'm intrigued by proclamations of angels throughout this song. They name Jesus as king, and they point, the shepherds are pointing to Bethlehem where Christ has just been born. Excuse me, the angels are pointing the shepherds to Bethlehem. Bethlehem, in the eyes of the world at the time of Jesus' birth, was no place for a king to be born, let alone the Christ. Yet here we are, invited to proclaim alongside an army of angels that the Savior of the world has come to the earth in a small shepherd's town, a city of David, anointed by God to save his people. There's another line in the song, Hark, the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn king. Heaven gathers an army of angels. Can you just picture that scene? It's familiar in the history of the Bible. If you look at 1 Kings 22 verse 19 or 2 Chronicles 18, 17, It's a gathering of army angels, and this time to welcome the new king born to mankind. But who is this king? He definitely wasn't next in line by way of King Herod. And in fact, upon hearing news of his birth, Herod launched an all-out war against his life, trying to get the Magi to give up his location and then killing all the firstborn sons. He wasn't the king the Jews anticipated would lead them valiantly into battle against their enemies. He was the king who left his throne in heaven. The king that took the form of mankind in order to pay the ultimate sacrifice for its freedom from sin. He is the king of ultimate humility and obedience. And he's the king of our hearts. So friends, as we find ourselves in this Christmas season, may we be invited into the heavenly host of angels proclaiming the birth of Christ who has come to save the world. And do we need saving? Our eyes are being opened daily, especially in this year of 2020, to how much we need a savior. And may we receive that salvation as we live day by day with the King of the world in the depths of our hearts. May we be encouraged by his human and humble beginnings. Heart the herald angels sing. The next song I'm going to talk about is Silent Night. Silent Night, Holy Night, Son of God loves pure light radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace jesus lord at thy birth this piece was originally written by ali rossborough again for our winter devotional she writes with the dawn of redeeming grace have you ever thought of what this line means it is so powerful As moms, we know our kids are going to do bad things. They've been doing that since they were born. We can teach them to behave well, but they have a bent to do bad things. Yet we still love and take care of them unconditionally. 
When Jesus Christ was born that first Christmas, God was setting in motion the ultimate plan to redeem humans. Jesus lived the perfect, sinless life that we can't live. We can try our best to be perfect, but we will always fall short. Jesus died the death we deserve on the cross, then rose again on the third day. God made it possible to redeem us without trying to do it ourselves. All we need to do is come to Him. We have to be willing to admit to ourselves and God that we can't fix ourselves and take the gift of redeeming grace by trusting in what Christ did, not ourselves. God is our loving parent who knows we are sinners in need of saving. So he lovingly put his plan into motion on that first Christmas. The next song I'm going to talk about is Oh Holy Night. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break for the slave is our brother. These next words were written by Ali Rossborough. Why is it that during Christmas, barriers come down and people give of themselves, either through money or time? Those who never go to church attend on Christmas, although that's going to look a whole lot different this year, isn't it? (laughs) We see people come together who normally would not. Christmas brings people together, young and old, rich and poor, liberal and conservative. There's a common understanding that loving each other is more important during the season. Christmas reflects who Christ is. showed us how to love each other by the way he loved and died for us. He put us before himself. We get this, especially as moms, putting our children's needs before ourselves is the same kind of example. And it's our kids' first exposure to God in Jesus. What they see and learn from us is how they will treat others. And Christmas reminds us to do this all year round. Our hope is that even though we fail at this, Christ's grace covers all those who follow him. God, help us to love others as we love ourselves. The last song I'm going to dive into is Joy to the World. You guys know this one, right? There's a joy that transcends circumstances. This joy permeates into the depths of depression, isolation, and heartache. It breaks through the bondage of war and hate and fear and rage. All of these things that we know very well. This joy is available to every person, nation, race, gender, and personality. It does not discriminate. This joy must be accepted even when it doesn't make sense. It relies on believing what we can't see and trusting that God's plan for history includes us. This is the joy that God offered to humanity through sending his son Jesus to be born in Bethlehem. This is joy for all the world. I know, it may seem hard to look at the world today and find much joy to take. It's easy to worry about the world that our kids will grow up in or are growing up in. It's concerning to know that we cannot control or predict every experience or interaction they will have. We can only do our best to equip them with the tools we think they will need to thrive. Joy is one of these tools. Returning to joy from stress, worry, doubt, fear, pain, guilt, etc. is what will allow us and our children to overcome what the world throws our way. It will restore our hearts and minds to the truth about who Jesus is to 
and for us. Dear friends, may we accept the joy of the Lord as we sing this beloved song with our friends and family in the next few days. May it fill us with the courage to press on and laugh at the days to come. The joy that God offered to the world on the night Jesus was born is the same joy he is offering to you today.